and worked for him for a time, if I'm correct, the Attorney General's office. Anyway, the Chair recognizes Gary Byler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. I'm only going to take a few minutes. I think the 2nd District folks are here in the middle. I've got some of the material in the back. Let me tell you briefly who I am. Good to see you again, Doctor. I know you know me, so you give it to him. Uh, let me tell you who I am and why it is I'm running for second Mr. Chair. I'm a lifelong, committed conservative uh, and have done everything in the party from licking stamps, knocking on doors, to serving as president of the Electoral College. My last job was at the White House of President Ronald Reagan, and some of y'all were talking about Bob McDonald. I have to brag on my late wife. She asked him to run for House of Delegates one afternoon when he was parking cars for us at an event for Morton Blackwell. He ran his first campaign for House of Delegates out of my law office. His campaign manager, Jerry Simica, slept on our sofa. This isn't in the 5,200 square foot house. This is in the 1,200 square foot house when we didn't have a whole lot of house. And we're all proud of Bob, and he's going to make a wonderful uh, governor. Uh, I got trained by Carl Rove in the early 1970s, in the mid 1970s, at the Student Fieldman School. I guess I must have passed because Carl didn't put me on the road, along with Senator Roger Wicker and a bunch of other folks uh, running the Student Fieldman School. Carl got me a job in the 1977 John Dalton campaign, although I was still supposedly attending college at Georgetown. Uh, once I was bit, that was it. Uh, I stayed with Senator with Dick Openchain's candidate for U.S. Senate, uh, who won the nomination, the largest political convention in history in 1978. Those of y'all who are old enough to remember uh, will recall that we lost Dick in a plane accident that August, and uh, John Warner became our nominee. I was honored to be Senator John Warner's a first legislative aide and speechwriter in the United States Senate. While I was still an undergrad, when I finished UVA Law School, I went straight to the White House President Reagan. Haven't had a job since. Don't want a job. As your party chairman, I'm not going to be looked to be, to be made a judge. Uh, I'm on the committee that introduced people to be judges now. Quite frankly, uh, I'm not very well suited for it, and I can't afford to pay that. As your district chairman, I'm going to be doing one thing, and that is looking to advance the ideological strength of our party. We have got to move forward by educating and leading. Now, here in the 2nd District, we've lost four seats in the last couple of cycles. And we've already lost control of the State Senate. Goodbye for redistricting. It's too late. We're not getting another State Senate race. So we have already lost control of the State Senate for redistricting. If we lose any more of these House seats, if we don't elect Bob McDonald, it will be the year 2020 before we get another chance to get this party together. So that's one reason I'm running now. If we can't afford any more losses, heck, we've got to win back a couple of the seats we've lost, and we've got to elect Bob McDonald uh, to be governor. Let me tell you my platform, uh, and I have some literature here and there in the back, but uh, briefly, it's very simple. One, I want to open the party process up to the public. Not the convention. How many people, and Bruce, you and Connie don't count, how many people have ever attended a second district committee meeting? State Central Committee members have and elected officials. That's it. If I'm your party chairman, everybody who's a delegate to the Second District Convention will be given notice of my meetings. My meetings will not be held without notice. Everybody who's a delegate will get an email. In addition to that, we're going to put it out to the press and to all high school government classes. When I served as presidential elector, I went and wrote to the government classes inside the district and offered lectures on the presidential electoral college, and some folks took me up on that. A speaker's bureau is something that a district chairman can do. It doesn't cost money, but it's important in order to lead. So as your second district chairman, I'm going to open the party process up by having public meetings and having a public budget uh, so that people can have input into it. One thing I've learned through the years is I don't have all the answers. Heck, that's the core of my philosophical belief, is that the government doesn't have all the answers. No individuals do. So we want to be able to open the process up so that I can get your individual input. I want to bring speakers into the district. When I left the White House in 83, I formed the Title Board Policy Forum, and ever since then I've been bringing national conservative speakers to come into the area. Uh, Grover Norquist, uh, Lee Atwater, uh, Roger Wicker, who was a congressman, he's now our newest member of the United States Senate from Mississippi. I'm hoping to have a formal announcement in the next day or two regarding May 17th of bringing Senator Wicker down. Now, when I bring down the speakers, we raise the money separately. When I am your district chairman, there will never be a cost to attend any of the speakers I bring down for the second district meetings. Quite frankly, the people who are willing that I can get to pay for it don't want to come to the meetings. So if the people who want to pay for it want to come to the meetings, that's fine. But there'll never be a charge to attend a second district event while I'm chairman. And I know I can raise the money because I've done it and I've got commitments lined up. Expand our youth involvement. 
If I'm your district chairman, the 2009 convention where we're going to nominate Bob McDonald and Bowling, there will be a minimum of 10 youth delegates funded and paid for by the second district. It doesn't take much. You can put four kids to a room. I won't tell you how many we had in Kansas City in 76 when Roe brought me down there, a whole lot more than four. But uh, I think we can raise enough money to limit them to four in a row. But we've got to reach out to the, to the young people. And if I'm your district chairman during the next national convention, I pledge to raise and to fund, even though I have to do it myself, but we can raise the money, to send one youth person to the Republican National Convention on our budget. This is an outreach program that is way overdue. We have got to keep up with the Democrats. Now, I'm proud to say that we registered 62 voters in the city of Virginia Beach these past couple of weeks for my candidate for district chairman. And if I'm your district chairman, I'm going to continue to do that. And then finally, I want to be directly accountable to you. I have a very, very blessed uh, law practice. We do favors for people and let them get hit by, and wait for them to get hit by cars. <laughs> you call my law office tonight. It gives you my cell phone number. Now, I'm a widower raising three kids by myself. I get very few calls. As your district chairman, my number and emails are on these sheets back there. I will be, and I won't say 24-7. There's, I live on the eastern shore, and there's a beautiful golf course over there, and on the back nine, the, the signal comes in and out. So I'm not going to promise to be on that phone nonstop, but if you call me, you're going to get a call back, because that's the way I do business. Anybody have any questions about me? Yes, sir. Time. Oh, time. Oh. <laughs> Let me just conclude. If you have any questions, speak to Do uh, Delegate Gear or Dr. Alvin Bryant. They've known me for a long time. I look forward to your support. Call me with any ideas or suggestions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.